what a crazy week. And it wasn't because of what actually happened in the real estate market. It happened in the courts. But there was also some really interesting developments in the actual real estate market as we walk into this very important spring market. In this video, we're going to go over the single family market and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to do an interest rate update. And we're going to talk about the biggest relevant current event that is, well, kind of out there right now. At this point, everyone has heard about the landmark case that just changed the real estate industry. And I've seen everything at this point from there's going to be no more real estate agents to no more buyer agents. So, well, nothing's going to change. We're going to unpack this and separate myth from reality towards the end of this video. The answer probably won't be what you expect. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to the real estate market, then know I am here to help. Two quick highlights. We buy houses all over Massachusetts cash, and we do it fast or, well, slow. Closing timelines. If you know of anyone that's looking to sell and doesn't want to go through the hassles of that traditional way, then have them visit cashofferna.com. And speaking of the good old traditional way of selling, we now offer a selling program of 1% instead of the traditional 5 to 6%. Do you know of anyone thinking about selling their house and wanting to save possibly tens of thousands of dollars? Then I would love to chat with them. Let's jump into the single family market stats. As expected this weekend, pretty much for the rest of the spring market, unless, well, there's a holiday week, of course, inventory, it grew. Inventory was up to 3,040 single family homes on the market in the state of Massachusetts. We now have 15.9% more houses on the market today than we did just 28 days ago. Now, this 3,040 units is an inventory high for 2024. We actually have to go back to Christmas week uh, in 2023 in order to find a week where we had more inventory on the market. At this time, we had 3,086 houses available for buyers to choose from during that Christmas week. Year-over-year -year inventory levels, well, they shot back up this week when compared to 2023, that is, but they actually pulled back from the comparison to 2022. We now have 103 more houses on the market when compared to the same time back in last year and 889 more houses on the market than today compared to today back in 2022. This 103 units is an inventory gap high. It's not much, I get it, but let's not get greedy. Every little bit helps when trying to find that balance between buyers and sellers. That is three weeks in a row of having a high 800 unit newly listed week. This week, we listed 881 single-family houses in the state of Massachusetts. This is 106 units, or 13.7% more than the same week back in 2023. This now makes for a seven-week streak of outlisting houses when compared to the same time back in 2023. Now, that four-week rolling average is 747 units. Spring came a little early this year. It was another strong week for under agreements. Last week, we put 835 single-family houses under agreement. With this week, us putting 836 houses under agreement. This week, we put 29 units of 3.6% more homes under agreement than the same week last year when 807 single-family houses went under agreement. Now, that four-week rolling average is 716 units. So when compared to last year's market, new listings, they were actually up by 13.7%, while under agreements, they were up by 3.6%. So that imbalance continues. There are 460 single-family houses that closed last week for an average sales price of $769,000 and a median sales price of $621,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were up by 8.8% as there were 423 single-family houses that sold this week last year for an average sales price of $800,000. Months of inventory, this is how we gauge what type of market that we're in, zero to five months. That's considered a strong seller's market with the closer you get to zero, the stronger the seller's market that it is. This week, months of inventory actually shot up again to 1.58 months from last week's 1.46 months. This 1.58 months is compared to 1.43 months this week last year. Real quick, it's my shameless plug. You knew it was coming. I just wanted to mention that if you're thinking about buying or selling a house, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now, onto the condo market. We have 2,019 condos on the market as of Monday. This is 13.8% more than the inventory levels on the market just 28 days ago. This week was another inventory high for 2024. We would have had to actually go back to the second week of December to see condo inventory levels higher than today. While inventory grew, it didn't grow at the pace as we saw in the past couple of years as the inventory gaps, they actually decreased. We now have 98 more units on the market today than today last year. Compare this to the 148 units that we had just two weeks ago. 
Meanwhile, we have 341 more units on the market, in the condo market, compared to the inventory levels of 2022. So today, good time. There were 456 condos that came on the market with the four-week rolling average of 421 units. Now, the 456 units listed was 46 units, or 11.2% more than the 410 condos that came on the market the same week back in 2023. Under agreements, they shot up this week. Again, this week we put 455 units under agreement. Now, this 455 condo sales was 81 units or 21.7% more than the same week last year when we put 374 condos under agreement. Now, that four-week rolling average for under agreements is 366 units. So, 11.2% more listings that came on the market when compared to this week, while selling 21.7% more condos when compared to this week last year. There were 229 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $731,000 and a median sales price of $550,000. This same week last year, there were 215 condos that sold. So sales levels, again, they were up by 6.5%. Months of inventory increased to 2.47 months from last week's 2.37 months. This is compared to the lots of inventory levels that we saw this week last year of 2.16 months. Any chance you can just do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button right down there? Believe it or not, it just makes a huge difference with that YouTube algorithm. Helps push it out to other people and just, it, it's it's enormous for me. And while subscribing, that one doesn't hurt either. So if you haven't subscribed and you like the content, I appreciate you considering subscribing. Time to talk about interest rates. And for the record, last week I said that the decrease in interest rates was not going to last. And boy, did interest rates move in the wrong direction last week. Nearly a quarter of a point in the last week. That's a big move. And you can thank the inflation data for this. I continue to think it's not going to get any better. And actually, well, think it's going to get worse before it gets better, personally. If that is the case and it gets worse before it gets better, then is any chance of a rate decrease goodbye and say hello to higher rates? I don't see how the Fed is able to lower rates in June. I know people are talking about, I just don't see it. Here, check out some of these headlines. I would think that I've already declared bankruptcy based off of these headlines. Okay, so let's dive into this. Essentially, the losses, which still needs to be approved by a judge, uncouples the real estate fees. In other words, the days that the fees are essentially always the responsibility of the seller, they're gone. The consumer gets to choose and each consumer is responsible for the compensation of the person that they hire. I have heard some agents say nothing's going to change. Full stop, they are full of crap. Essentially, the gist of it all is that sellers aren't going to be able to advertise on the MLS what they are offering to a buyer broker for that buyer broker to bring a buyer to their house. It will be up to the buyer and that buyer agent to negotiate that commission at the time that they present the offer to the seller. For the record, this is how it's done in the commercial industri industrial world. It's not an awful thing. I've always felt that from an industry perspective, it makes no sense for a person that has been in the industry for 20 years and has sold more than a thousand houses gets paid the same amount as a newly licensed agent that is selling their ha first house just because, well, that's what the seller and the seller's agent agreed to. What changes on the seller side is that they can choose to offer compensation to a buyer agent or not. Ultimately, if there is a buyer agent bringing them an offer, then their compensation, it's going to be part of that negotiation offer in regards to the sales price of the house. Where this makes monumental changes, it's on the buyer side. And this is where it will really affect the industry. But more on that in just a couple moments. Agents obviously need to be compensated for their work. So the relationship between a buyer agent and the client changes because there needs to be a conversation of compensation from the onset. In order for a buyer to tour houses, then they're going to need to have a signed agreement between that agent showing them the houses. Now, it could be an exclusive buyer agency agreement like we have now, or it could be at least what I think will end up being developed is a one-time showing compensation agreement. In other words, if you want to see the house at 123 Main Street and you want Mary Jo to show it to you, then you will have agreed upfront how much she will be compensated. That will be the negotiable part between you as the buyer and Mary Jo. How Mary Jo will be paid is between the negotiation of the buyer and the seller. It's my belief that most buyers will opt to have the compensation worked into the transaction and thereby the financing. A great way I heard it explained was like this. You're driving to Boston. There are two ways to get there. One way, it's going to take you a couple minutes longer. But either way, you're going to get to that same destination. 
we all will get to the same destination. It's just going to take us a little longer. And that's a good thing. I think transparency to the consumer is very beneficial for all the parties. But because the buyer will more clearly see what they are paying the buyer agent, and for the record, the buyer has always paid the buyer agent fee. They were actually paying both the buyer and the seller fee because think about it, right? Whose money was the seller paying the agent fees with? It was the buyers. But now that will all be a negotiation and there is more transparency. And because of this, the buyer process will begin to look a lot like the seller process. An agent, they're going to meet with the buyer first. They're going to go over the process and their experience, and then they're going to talk about how they are compensated and how much it costs to retain their services for the work that they're ultimately going to do for you. This makes so much sense. It's the way I personally have done it. But as an industry, that professional way was rare, very rare. This is why there will be a great reduction in the amount of agents that are in the industry. The bottom weight, it's going to be eliminated. Part-time agents or agents that are just in it to sell a couple of houses a year, maybe like the stay-at-home moms or dads or should be retired agents. I believe that this new structure and how real estate is going to operate, it's going to eliminate these folks. The talent level is going to drastically increase. I'm going to do a more in-depth video on this topic in the near future, but just wanted to address, well, that elephant in the room right over there. Want to talk about all your own personal real estate needs? Again, it's Jeff Chubb. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a house in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. And if you know of anyone that's thinking about buying or selling a house, then I truly appreciate you passing along my information. You can visit youtuberealestateagent.com or find all my contact information in the description below right down there. Until next time.